Hi, today we've got some new hardware from Metcow to take a look at. These are relatively new items to their product lineup and they are the Microfine hand pieces. And in front of us today we've got a soldering iron and we have a set of tweezers. Now these are available in two different variants. The version that I've got here is the MX version for the MX series of soldering stations. So those are the black ones. Um, so the MX500, the MX5000 and the MX5200. Um, and then we've got another version which is the CV version which is if you've got the connection validation system, the one with the orange front that gives you feedback on your soldering. It's a different product for that because it needs the extra connector which has the identification of the cartridge and then it allows you to do tracking of how many solder joints and uh, that kind of thing with those versions. So these soldering irons are specifically designed for SMD precision rework under a microscope where there might be limited distance between the PCB and the objective lens and where you want something really quite compact and comfortable to hold rather than wielding a really large soldering iron. So in comparison here, what we've got is the JBC245 handpiece. We've got one of the Chinese clones of the T115. Then we've got the standard Metcal soldering handpiece, the Ultrafine, and then at the top here, we've got the Microfine handpiece. The actual soldering iron itself is extremely compact. It's 115 millimeters. Um, from this point to the end here, so very, very small. And it's also really quite lightweight. Without the cartridge in here, it weighs less than 12 grams. It is entirely made from plastic, but it feels like a very high quality plastic. Uh, certainly not something that's gonna break easily. We've got this really nice uh, grip here that feels very comfortable to hold and is a little bit thicker than the rest of the handpiece. So um, certainly not a problem for me just yet, but those that have a bit of trouble gripping something really, really fine will not have any trouble using this type of soldering iron, but it does feel very comfortable to hold. And then we've got this really nice coax cable. This one is only 3.5 millimeters in diameter, so quite a bit thinner than the regular Metcal coax. And it's also 1.9 meters long. So when you've got your base station sat at the back of your bench and you're working underneath your microscope, you won't feel um, this being tugged uh, as you're struggling to reach the workpiece that you're trying to work on. But yeah, this feels really nice and comfortable to hold. And certainly when you're holding it, it's really no higher than the height of your hand. So if you're able to fit your hand underneath the microscope, this will be extremely easy to use. There's quite a range of soldering cartridges available for these irons. Uh, I've got a few of them here. So this one's a really fine 0.3 millimeter tip for some really precision soldering, all the way up to a 1.2 millimeter chisel. And there are some other varieties, including uh, conical bent tips. So ones that have got a little bend at the end. There's also a hoof and a slotted tip as well. So quite a range of cartridges available. Um, so you should be able to find pretty much any type of cartridge that you need for your uh, precision SMD soldering. And to install the cartridge, you just simply plug it into the end here, give it an extra push, and it clicks into place at the end here. And you can rotate the cartridge, so if the um, coax cable uh, is naturally folded so that it sits in a certain position, you can twist this cartridge so that you get it at the right angle for your soldering. And then we've got the Microfine tweezers. So these are the MXH10 MFTs. And in comparison, we've got the Metcal PTZ tweezers. These are the precision tweezers designed for use with the Metcal MX5200, but these are really quite heavy duty. They can accept, uh, you know, these large cartridges that are able to dump lots of heat into the joint, uh, but they're not really suited to the most fine precision soldering. These ones are designed to work on components from 1206 down to 01005, whereas once you get below about 0603, these ones are starting to get a little bit unwieldy. Obviously, you can get cartridges that are a little bit uh, smaller geometry, but they start to get a little bit clumsy on some of the high density PCBs with lots of little components. Then we've got the JBC AM 120s. And I seem to remember I wasn't hugely impressed with these. I didn't think the finish on these was all that great. And also it only works with some very specific stations. You either have to use one of the expensive DDE stations or you have to use the compact line station that is specifically for these tweezers that can drive the dual cartridges, which is why these don't seem to work and we can't seem to um, get them to work with any of the JBC clones because you actually need two independent drivers to drive these two cartridges. And then in comparison, we've got the much smaller microfine tweezers just here. 
So here are the tweezers up close and these look really nice. They're again, they're pretty compact, 98 millimeters long and less than 30 grams. There's a little bit more mass than the soldering iron, but these feel really comfortable in the hand. So all of this is rigid plastic, although this section here does feel a little bit softer uh, than the plastic over here. And these seem to be really well built. One of my complaints about the JVC ones was that the fit and finish wasn't very good and there was quite a bit of play in the mechanism. But this one feels really nice. There's a little dial here which you can use to set the offset. So this is central and if we twist that knob a bit then it just offsets the two tweezers. So if you do need to need do some fine adjustment uh, you can do. But yeah that's perfectly in alignment and yeah they do feel really nice you can also once again twist the cartridges so if you need to use them at a very specific angle you can turn them around in the handpiece if you need to do so we've got a cord grip here and then again we've got that 3.5 millimeter coax and again this one's about two meters long so loads of cable if you have your base station away in the corner of the bench once again, there's a variety of cartridges available and they do come in pairs for the tweezers, uh, but we've got things like the straight cartridges as well as some bent ones here, which allow you to approach at a different angle and potentially avoid colliding with other components. So lots of these to choose from with the tweezers. Taking a look at the cradle, this is basically the same design as the MX and the CV systems when we reviewed those. This part here that actually holds the soldering iron is customized depending on which version that you buy so they just replace this part here so that it has the right shape to hold the iron or in this case the tweezers that you have here but the rest of it is the same which does mean that this section at, hit, at the back here which is designed for holding the cartridges isn't really optimized for these tiny microfine cartridges it's designed for holding the large cartridges that are used in the regular iron and it's probably more of an issue for the tweezers, but when you've got a whole bunch of these cartridges, this doesn't really fit very well. Like you can't store pairs of cartridges in one of the holes. So it would have been nice if they've customized it a little bit for the microfine tweezers, maybe with an insert or something like that, rather than them being so loose in here. In terms of the cradle itself, you can adjust the angle here. So you undo these two knobs and there is some detents in there. The shallower you can have it the better because then the heat rises up here rather than into the iron itself and then the front part is what's changed here so rather than a sponge they've mounted this little bit of kit here so these are some uh, feels like aluminium bits of metal here and these are designed to remove the cartridge so even though you are provided with the traditional metcal um silicone sponge that you can um, silicone uh, pad that you can pull out a cartridge with you've actually got these little inserts here where you can pull out the cartridge and you can set up another one and just push it in like that now if the cartridge is cold you can actually just insert the cartridge and then it detects the change reboots you've got about three or four seconds to get your fingers away before it starts heating up but this is quite nice here and then instead of the sponge we've got this brass pad here it looks quite silvery in the picture but it is brass for cleaning the tip on here. So overall, that feels pretty nice. All of this part is metal. Um, the overall cradle is made of heavyweight plastic, but there is a metal plate at the bottom here, which gives it quite a bit of heft. The only thing, again, that I would complain about is that, once again, they've still got these sticky pads here for the grip. And over time, the adhesive on these does go gooey, and then you start to find them sliding off and then the cradle will rock on the bench. So it would have been nice if they had some um, grips on here that were screwed in like we just saw on one of the other stations. Uh, but it's pretty functional, it seems to do the job.
So I've put quite a few hours on these tools now, so I've got a good feel for how they behave and where their limitations are. And the first thing to note is they are very nicely designed, so they're extremely comfortable to hold, and you do get very little user fatigue while using them for long periods of time. Also, there doesn't seem to be any heating of the grip up here. I noticed when I was using the T115 um, handpiece from JBC, it does start to get pretty toasty after you've done an extended amount of soldering, but I didn't notice that too much with this particular soldier nine. Also, um, the tweezers are really, really nice. Uh, the larger talon tweezers seem to get a bit clumsy below about 0603 size components, but these are really precision and you can really get in there nicely, especially with the bent uh, cartridges that allow you to get coming at about a 45 degree angle. So yeah, really, really nice tweezers. Uh, but what I will say is these are really for a very specific use case. If you're planning to do general purpose soldering, then these probably aren't the tools for you. These are for precision soldering under a microscope as they're described. And I think if you're working on things like motherboards and mobile phone PCBs, you probably will also want an infrared preheater just to bring the board temperature up maybe to something like 100 degrees or so, so that you're not wicking away all of the heat because these cartridges do have very small heaters in them. And like any precision soldering iron, there is a limitation as to how much power you can deliver into the board. So I was doing all of that work on the motherboard without any preheating. And some of those took quite a long time to heat up because there were thermal vias onto very large thermal planes. So you do need to know what you're doing with them. But these soldering irons and desoldering tweezers do work very well. Also, if you are in the market for something like these and you don't happen to have the Metcal base station, they do actually work with the Thermaltronic systems as well. So if you happen to have that system and you want to use these with it, I did test it and they do work perfectly fine with those units. They're quite low power. So um, any incompatibilities or slight difference in the impedance isn't really noticed because they've got very small cartridges. So I'll put a link to these items in the description down below. Also, I will bring up these PCBs in a future video. Uh, but if you want to get some boards like this made, and even if you want to get them populated with the parts on it so you don't have to assemble them yourself, you can visit our sponsor for this video, PCBWay at PCBWay.com, where you can get these inexpensive boards made. A big thank you to Metcal for sending these items through for review. If you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comment section down below. And until next time, thanks for watching.